In this Complete Beginner's Guide to Blender 5, we're making this fantastic scene you can see here. And in this particular video, we're finishing off the monster with these big arms to grab the old man. So let's get started. Okay, so here's where we got up to last time and we're going to create the arm. Now this is something you might want to have a try yourself if you're feeling a bit confident. Don't worry if not, you can just follow along with me. Start off making it so that it's straight. So an icosphere at the top, a cube underneath that for the upper arm, cube for the lower arm, and then cube for the hand, and then single cubes for the fingers and another one for the thumb. And then once you've made it, you can start moving it into position so it's a bit more bent, ready to grab our old man. So you might want to pause the video here and have a go at that. Otherwise, you can follow along with me and see how I made it. Okay, so I'll press shift right click to move my 3D cursor. I'll start with the shoulder or the icosphere. So shift A to add, mesh, and then icosphere just there and scale that down so it's shoulder size. And then let's just come across to front view and move that out slightly. I'll probably resize these later on, but just get it in a rough position for now. Shift right click to move my 3D cursor again, shift A to add, and let's add a cube. Again, scale that down, shift Z to start, so it becomes an oblong and then scale it down further. And somewhere around there should work nicely. And and that looks all right from this angle as well. So back to front view, shift each duplicate. I'll make this one smaller for the forearm, move that up so it's that kind of size. Might have to select both and just G to grab in Z, move them up very slightly here, and then leave space for the hand down here. So I'll select this one, shift each duplicate in the Z axis, make this a fair bit smaller, somewhere around there. Let's go to side view and let's just scale in the Y. The same size actually as the lower arm makes sense for the hand. So I didn't need to scale in the Y earlier. And let's just make sure there's a little bit of overlap there. And that looks good. And then fingers. So shift each duplicate, scale it down slightly to somewhere around here, I think. And I just move those to the top of the hand like this. And then I'll move this edge in a second across there, across the side view, scale in the Y, nice and small fingers, G to grab, move those into position and shift D to duplicate. And I'll rotate this one around and move that up like so and duplicate and rotate this one. Could make this back one a bit smaller, actually like a small finger. Then for the thumb, I'll select this one, shift each duplicate and bring that to more towards the front here. So there's kind of a curve to the hand there and into side view, R to rotate and somewhere around about there should work nicely. And with the fingers, going to get to front view and rotate them very slightly. So there's kind of a natural curve to the hand that's a bit more natural looking. And this front finger here, I can rotate ZZ for the local Z axis and have that come around like so and rotate it this way. So there's a natural curve there. It looks a bit more like a hand then. Not much, but a bit. <laughs> I'll just move these back slightly. So G then X, so they don't overlap the edge there. And there's a very basic arm and hand, which is looking good. If you're following along with me, you might want to just pause the video here and catch up. Okay, so now it's just a case of positioning the arm. So I'll select these objects and start rotating them. So at the moment, it's rotating around a kind of center point, the median point, <laughs> I should say, of all these objects. And you can see with the dotted white line where that median point is. I could move my 3D cursor to the top, so shift right click. And with my transform pivot point, I can actually change it to the 3D cursor instead of the median point, as you can see, that's the default at the moment. So across to the 3D cursor here, and now when I press R to rotate, it's around the 3D cursor. So that's really helpful. And I'll move it back slightly. And then if I press shift right click to move my 3D cursor and choose this object, it will rotate backwards around the 3D cursor. The one thing about this is that you must remember to change it back, otherwise it gets very confusing. If I try and select this one now and press R to rotate, still going around the 3D cursor, which can be a bit awkward. So do remember to change it back. So transform pivot point in the middle here, median point is the default. I'll select the whole arm, shift right click to move my 3D cursor and then use the 3D cursor once again as the transform pivot point and give this a bit more of a arm reaching out like this. And I rotate around the Z axis to kind of have it with a bit more sort of a hunch. So it's leaning over, leaning forward like this. And I'll just do some minor adjustments. So the hand here, I'm going to rotate that. Oh, move my 3D cursor, rotate that around this spot here, like it's ready to grab something. Now, if you need to make any adjustments to the size of your different objects, you can go into them and remember that you've got the local axis because if I press N on my keyboard, we've got this rotation here, which has gone away from the global axis. And I can click on this now and let's say I want to make this a shorter hand. I can scale, I think it might be ZZ. You just have to figure out which one's the local axis. You can turn on your gizmos and all sorts to see, but it's just easier to tap the axis twice to see which one it is. So the local Z there, I'll bring that in and then these, I can bring them all in. I'll just change back to medium point so it's not confusing. G to grab and move those into position. And a smaller hand like that possibly makes more sense. 
Now, if I want to change my fingers all together, there's another transform pivot point option called individual origins. That's really useful because I can now press scale in the local X and I can bring those in and it's scaling them all individually. So individual origins is quite a helpful transform pivot point as well. So we've got an arm just there and I'll make the shoulder a bit bigger now. So I'll scale that up a bit. I might move that towards the back slightly. I'll just rotate this one by hand and make sure the arm sits more at the back of the character here. And I feel like the whole character needs to lean forward a bit more. So I can select all these objects here, go to side view, and I'll just rotate by hand, but I've got my individual origins on. So I'll undo that and go back to medium point and rotate these like so. And I want a nice lean to them like this. There we go. And that looks good. Maybe the arm's a bit wider. I'll just go to front view. I'll press in on my keyboard to get rid of the side panel. And I'm going to bring them out slightly. So G then X out to here and make my character really wide. So into edit mode with the torso. Alt Z to go to X-ray mode and select these end faces or edges here or vertices. It doesn't matter. Any of those. And I can press G then X to bring those across, make it nice and wide and super intimidating. Somewhere around there. X-ray mode back off. And let's see what that looks like. I could move this edge back slightly. So G then YY, I think. There we go for the local Y axis. Actually, I think it looks better as it was, so I won't bother about that. The last edits I will make is to the shape of the arm. So I can select these objects into edit mode, into face mode, select this end face here and scale that down. So there's a bit of a taper to the arm there. Then into this object here, so into object mode, select the new object into edit mode and select the end face there and scale that one down. Probably just need to adjust that very slightly so it overlaps the hand slightly. And I think that's working nicely. I feel like the upper arm needs to be a bit bigger. So back into that object, into edit mode, and I'll select top face and scale that up. It's nice and big, move that into position a bit. And maybe I'll put a loop cut around the middle, so Control R, and then scale that up just a touch. So it looks like an arm shape and it's got a kind of a bicep. And I think that works well. So back into object mode, slight minor adjustment. I'm going to take these and rotate around the local Z axis, I think it is, like so and just rotate them very slightly, moving them out very slightly more. So there, minor adjustments, doesn't make too much difference. So you might want to pause the video, catch up with me, and getting roughly into this position, or something that looks like they're reaching and about to grab the old man character. Okay, so now all we need to do is copy these to the other side. A mirror modifier would be good for this. So I can select all these objects and select this one last because I know it's got a mirror and it's got my trunk as the middle object, I think, which will work nicely. So I can press Control L, copy modifiers and that's across the other side. Sometimes you want to do a little bit of adjustment when you see it on the other side. I'll just press one to go to front view and alt A to deselect all, see what that looks like. I think that's quite fun. Might want to adjust it when we put the head in. So as always, catch up with me, making sure you've got two arms now. And lastly, you might want to have a go at making the head for yourself. So pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I'll press shift right click to move my 3D cursor into the middle, shift A to add, and just a cube to start off with should be fine. I'll go to side view, scale it down, G to grab, move it into position, just on the front of the body there, scale YY for the local Y axis, so it's a bit flatter. It's got this sort of head just here. Also, I'll press N on my keyboard and just make sure it's in the center. So choose the X axis, change that to zero, see a slight bit of movement there. And a square head like that is actually quite fun, I think. Then it's just a case of adding some eyes. Now I could duplicate this object and move it forward and scale it down. That'd be quite handy because it would match the rotation, but I'm going to show you how you can copy the rotation from one object to another. So I'll shift right click to move my 3D cursor, shift A to add, mesh and then cube, scale it right down. So as you can see, if I zoom in on that with period key on my numpad. Incidentally, that's in the view menu under frame selected, numpad period key. That zooms right in, you just have to zoom out a little bit. If I come around to side view, you can see that it's not got this rotation. But if I select this object and hover over the rotation here and press Control C, then over my new object and press Control V, hovering over the X there, you can see it's pasted the rotation in. And that's a really handy feature, I like that. Okay, so that's good. I just need to bring it down. So G then ZZ, bring it down a bit closer to the middle. Eyes are generally in the middle of the head, although they feel like they're higher up. And I'll copy the mirror modifier from this object here. So shift left click, control L, copy modifiers, and you can see the eye on the other side. Now my eyes have a frown to them, so I'm going to go into edit mode. Oh, I've got both objects selected, so it's gone into edit mode for both objects. It's very helpful that you can do that, but we don't need to in this case. So I'll come out of edit mode, select my eye object into edit mode, and let's give them a frown, interface mode, and select that face there. Scale ZZ, and then G ZZ, and then they've got nasty frown, very scary. <laughs> 
Okay, so there's a few things you might want to do here. You might want to give it a little bit more shape. So I'll go to object mode, select the head into edit mode and control R to do a loop cut down the middle. And I might want to select both these edges and G to grab in the Y to move those back to give it a little bit more shape in some way. In fact, I'll undo that. G, Y, Y would make more sense, the local Y axis, which possibly works. And you could add some loop cuts and change the shape as much as you like. But I think it looks all right like this. I think it's quite fun character. So back into object mode, I'll just select the eyes and move those backwards. So G, Y, Y. So they're just tucking in a bit there and that looks good. Okay, so you might at this point want to adjust your character very slightly and change their position. I feel like I want them squatting down slightly more. I think the leaning over is relatively good, but we'll see what happens when I squat the legs a bit more. So I'm going to select this leg here, go to side view, and I'm going to use my 3D cursor. That's much more helpful when moving limbs around. So shift right click, change my transform pivot point to the 3D cursor. Incidentally, the keyboard shortcut for this is period key. That's quite helpful. So if I press R to rotate now, that means I need to bring my whole character down. This is much easier if you rig your characters, of course, but that's a little bit beyond this course. This one here, I'll shift right click to this position and rotate it. So they've got more of a squat, so they're ready to pounce. That's a bit more like it. And again, I'll select all these objects here in side view. I'll just get rid of the side panel. We don't need that anymore. And bring this down to somewhere around here. Ah, that looks great fun. Just have a good look around, make sure you're happy with the position. I'll deselect all so I can see that nice and easily. And that looks great. Lastly, then I'm just going to change my transform pivot point back to medium point. And this time I'll press the period key on my keyboard, not my numpad and change it to medium point, which is the default. And I'm going to select all these objects, M to move to new collection, new collection, monster and create. I'll move them above the floor as well, actually. So front view, G to grab in the Z and let's move them over to the side. So G then X. And then I can bring back my old man who's looking rather large at the moment. I think they'd intimidate the monster more than the other way around. So I can select my old man, scale them down. And that would have been better if I'd had the transform pivot point on the floor. So I'll undo that, move my 3D cursor, period key to use the 3D cursor as the pivot point and scale them down a little bit quicker, that one. So they can be very small down like this. Incidentally, each of these grid markers is one meter. So that's a 1.7 meter man there. So that's just under six foot. We'll make them a bit smaller, I think, somewhere around there. And this monster then is just over three meters. That's a bit more like it. And then I press Alt-A to deselect all and we're ready to position our characters. So hopefully you've gotten okay with all of that. As always, do check the description for any updates and the fantastic playlist on this channel and my wonderful courses. If you've got any questions, then do comment below. Thanks for watching and do make sure you've saved your work ready for next time.